and welcome to our 2022 Clipper 16 FB. Starting right in your back bumper here, you can just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there, inside of the bumper you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here, it's how you hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keep it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit cleaner. In this corner, as well as the other back corner, we've got a stabilizer jack here. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. A step forward from there, we get your sewer system. So that cap there just kind of pops out. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer always had. It'll attach the same way, just pressing it in until it's locked into place. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve's controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet, so it's of course gonna be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can come to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Also underneath here is your low point drain, so your hot water in front, cold water in the back. Just drains out the water lines of the units. If you leave in for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it before you leave. Up from there is the cable and satellite inlet. Coax cable plug into there, fires up your TV location. Up above that is your power cord inlet. So down in the bottom corner, you can see that little notch lines up with this notch here. Press those in together, little eighth turn to lock it down, then you get the threaded collar in the back there to lock it in place. Following the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites will have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter, so if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Up above your power inlet is the exhaust for your furnace. If you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Fridge vent right here. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you want to make sure that this flap here is opened up with your fan inside turned on. Once you're done, just kind of pressing that flap into place and you'll hear it click. It'll just prevent any dust from picking up in there. Hot water tank here. So your control for turning this guy on is just inside of the unit. Before turning it on though, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. If the tank were full, you'd get some water coming out of there. If you're not getting any water, there's just the, the chance that it's empty. So of course you want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just locking it back down with the keyway. These two ports here are just vents for your fridge. There's nothing really back there for you to worry about. This here is just the drain for it, so it's perfectly normal to see some water dripping out of there. Fresh water tank inlet right here. You unthread that and your water hose will plug into there. Turn on the water and it'll fill up your fresh water tank. Down underneath it is your city water connection. So the same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Fresh water drain is just that little cap on the end of the white hose there. You unthread that, it allows the water tank to drain itself out. One end of your storage compartment here. So inside of here you're gonna find a storage guard that the customers opted to go with as well as the weight distribution hitch and a bluetooth brake controller there around front of the unit this little black box here is housing your battery so as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pins your tow vehicle that battery's charging for you the propane tanks right underneath here if we just kind of reach in the back follow that hose in you can find the little knob there you can open that up standard tongue jack in the front one way's up one way's down Solar panel inlet. So basically just plug in the two prong plug into there, charges the battery. Other end of your storage compartments here. Inside of here, you're gonna find your water hose. Inside of that water hose is that perk adapter. So your 30 amp cord to there, 15 with standard outlet. You also get this little jack here, just has the little three quarter inch end on it so you can run all of your stabilizers. GFI protected outlet. Little leash link here, so if you've got the dog out with it, you can tie him down. Then in the back of the unit, you get your spare tire. Straight up from there, you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. Now making our way inside of the unit. Now with this door here, it can be a little bit tricky, but if you kind of press on it there with your hand, it makes it a bit easy. You just pull. It's a bit finicky sometimes. All right, so it is on a friction hinge, so as long as, well, it's on a friction hinge, so wherever you leave it, it stays there. The yellow hand in and over, and we can pull the stairs out. Now these are the wrong pins, you do have the correct ones on order. Basically just slide them in and out, allows you to extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. As we get inside, first things first, right on the right there, we get your fire extinguisher. That's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Up the wall from there, on the far right, we got your awning light switch. Center right is your ceiling lights. Center left is your water pump, so as you turn that on, it turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. And your water heater is in the far left there. As you turn on that water heater switch, you'll get that little red light up there letting you know that the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's going to go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it doesn't fire up, that light's going to come on and stay on at that point, just off and back on to reset it. A bit of closet space here, as well as I guess some shoe storage. 
Then for the awning, it's just on this switch here, you press and hold extend, that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap come down as well as the black metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. There's a flap and there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now, for it to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water, anyways. So what you can do is either arm, front, or rear, just make sure that knob's loosened off. Grab the arm and pull it in, tighten it back down, and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to run and off. I have to like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing up front. Before you bring it back in, though, you want to make sure these knobs are back loosened off and fully out extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. I'm going to press and hold the track. The awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure the fabric's on the top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Here you get your monitor system. So on the left there you have batteries. You can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good. F is fair. L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Right above our heads is our smoke detector. And I'll make our way into the bathroom here. Pretty straightforward. Your light switches over on the left there. Up above your head, you do get your roof vent. Just turn that knob to open it up. You do have that max air roof vent cover installed for you as well toilet straightforward just flips on open you get your flusher front and center then into the shower you get your hot and cold water there with the standard head and hose a little bit of storage space here Underneath your furnace is your converter. So as you press the top and center, it'll pop on open. All of your breakers are on the left side here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And all of your fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. So storage down underneath the stove. You also get the light here as well as the fan. So this is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. For the stove, we're just gonna turn it over to light and grab a lighter simple as that this binder right here has all of your owner's manuals any remotes any keys anything like that for the unit you're going to find right in there this cubby itself on some units does have a microwave in it so you can see you do have the outlet up there so if you wanted to put one in you can more storage space here there's a little light up above the sink just in its own center push button all right hot and cold water of course for the fridge, little thumb latch on the side there, you just push that up and you can open it up. You get access to the fridge down low and your freezer up top. Flip this guy on open, you get your power button on the left there. So with that close to flush, that's it turned on. This button on the right here, close to flush, is in auto. Auto is first looking for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out dry camping and you want it running solely on gas, you can have this button come out over flush. And it'll fire up just on gas. If that check light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. Thermostat right here is a control for your furnace. With that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. All the way over to the right is max heat. Temperature readout in the bottom there. For your furnace, you do just have this one outlet for it. You kind of turn this around, choose whether you're going left or right or up and down. So as we slide this all the way back over to the left, you'll hear it click. And that's it then turned off. Cable and satellite outlet, as well as your GFI protected outlet. So test on the side, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Above the bed is a little light here. Emergency exit here. So just all the blinds throughout the unit. Pretty much split where you leave them. So for the emergency exit, you're just flipping that up all the way. Take that red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. USB outlet as well as the, or the uh, GFR protected outlet in the back. 
little handle right in the front here so you can pick up your bed if you do get access to your storage compartments. Kind of straight down from that handle is your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. And you just get your storage right across the front, which is all just open like that. The dinette, this is currently set up as the dinette. If you were to take your table here and wiggle it up and out of the legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table will then sit onto these little black blocks that you have there. You take the, sitting it onto there, take your two back cushions, put it in the center to create your bed. And then lastly, right above our heads here, you've got your air conditioner. So you have the two low fan speeds. It's just moving air around, high fan, same idea. Low cool is the low fan with cooling. We have high cool, of course, high fan with the cooling. Temp control knob in the back here, you will notice it's got heat. The heat pump is not hooked up or installed simply because we've got a dedicated furnace. So we're just going to be leaving that in max cool. Little louvers on either end so you can choose whether you're shooting your air forward, backward, or both. And really, that's about it. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204 237 7272.